Yeah, Former really. Patriots staffer Mike Lombardi joins us on the program. Uh, and uh, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. It's always good to be here. I enjoy Boston. Love Boston. Start right with this. Uh, Patrick Pass is a former Patriots running back. He, on Monday, tweeted the following. Imagine having a coach that brought you six championships in 16 years and were always close to the top the other years, and then letting Michael Felger convince you he was actually bad. <laughs> I love that. Which Michael Lombardi then immediately re Hearted. retweeted and said, preach. <laughs> preach. So, and I think you misspelled preach. It's P-R-E-A. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm bad at pronouncing names and spelling. Thank God for Grammarly. I mean, if you, Either told, way. if you would have told my English teacher at Valley Forge Military Academy that I wrote two books, they would have laughed at me. But... You Are know, we and others dumping too much dirt on Bill Belichick? Oh, my God. You're killing him. I mean, the guy won six Super Bowls. Now, I know. I know. Look, I, I got two rings. I know Brady did everything from the janitorial services in the building to winning the Super Bowl. I get that. And I love Tommy to death. And I appreciate everything. I really do. But you, you have no idea. Nobody has any idea. I said it to Skip Bayless, too, who basically called Belichick a glorified defensive coordinator. And I, and I sent him a tweet, which I, I don't know if he read it or not. But I said, you have no idea what you're talking about. Unless you've been in that building, you have no idea. And you've never been in the building. So you guys are killing them and you don't really you won't appreciate the greatness of a great coach so what like a lot of people so what happened how come it's so bad if he's so great how'd it get so bad well i think it got bad like a lot of teams get bad right you, you know you miss on a quarterback i think that's pretty clear you thought you had a really good quarterback you made some mistakes in hiring andy reed hired juan castile to be his defense coordinator from the offensive line that ran him out of philadelphia i think you make some mistakes and your margin for error is smaller and I think ultimately, I think what, what, what Dietrich Wise said this year was true. We, we have a bad record. We don't have a bad team. I think if you put a quarterback on that team, the narrative would change. However, and I'm not trying to blame Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi for everything, because there were other problems that went into that. But I think, to me, uh, you is, know, I think there's a big part of that in the NFL. Is Bill not responsible for those quarterbacks and how they played? I think he certainly is, and I think he is accountable for it. I think he certainly takes accountability for that. But, you know, when you saw the quarterback play well as a rookie, you kind of feel like he was going to. The third year, I think the biggest mistake they made as an organization was not bringing competition in behind Mac because Mac wasn't very good. Now, everybody said it was because of Matt Patricia, and everybody firmly believed that Billy O'Brien would be able to fix that, and obviously that didn't happen. Okay, for the record, I've taken nothing away from Bill during the Brady years. He was a great compliment to a great quarterback. Mm -hmm. Obviously did a great job. Yeah, here we go. But, Mike, his, here we go. Come on. his track record without him speaks for itself. No, I mean, it does it's, it, it's it, completely the ridiculous narrative. It's, it's the laziest long, narrative. How is it late? The, the scoreboard the is lazy? It's the laziest narrative you it's could ever scoreboard? have. Don Schultz, the scoreboard? Don Schultz is the winningest coach in football, and he went to one Super Bowl with Danny Marino. Okay. Okay? You look at you look at Andy Reid when they after Donovan McNabb and Kevin Cobb and when they went through that. Andy Reid won with Alex Smith. Okay, he did, he won with Alex Smith, right? But that was when he went to Kansas City when he was in Philadelphia with Kevin Cobb after Donovan McNabb. That didn't go so well. So I think there's always a transitional period you have to go through. That's such a lazy narrative that oh he's no good. That Brady was the reason to go. No, 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 All no. Hold on. Are I just told you. I told you he did All a great job with coach, Brady. Oh. Should, shouldn't he have some track but, record without him uh, to prove how great he is? Because yeah, he is not. I, I think you saw with Cam Newton the year they won with Cam Newton. I think that was Seven one of his and best. Nine? That was one of his best with a quarterback that couldn't throw the ball. They were five and nine, and he chose the quarterback well there five was and how nine many other quarterbacks weeks. were available at that point I, I i think to me you sit there and second guess and it's great but unless you really understand the dynamics of everything that's going on which i don't think you do i, I think you have a hard time doing it and i'm not here to i'm not here to to shill for my friend because he doesn't need me to, to support him he's going to go into the hall of fame he's the greatest coach of all time however to me you got to look at the whole thing the whole landscape have you seen have you seen the whole landscape? I mean, they're one of the lowest paying teams in the league in terms of payroll over the last five years. I'm with you on that. Okay, so like there's other elements that go into this thing, and I'm not blaming anybody. He's responsible for the record. I think he stood accountable for the record. But he also is responsible for some of the winning too. It wasn't just one player. They threw for 143 yards in the first Super Bowl. They ran for 142. Like like it's not just one guy, and we see that. 
I mean, Warren Moon threw for 27 miles of yards in the National Football League. 27 miles. He w went to one conference championship game. Right. One of the greatest teams of all time, the Houston Oilers, they went to one conference championship game. It takes three things working together. Why does no one want him? Oh, I don't think that's the case. You see, you, you know, it's amazing. You can draw well, a straight how, how line. How can you say that's you a bad narrative a when he line. has no job, Mike? He has he no can job. You draw a straight line with uh, the most ridiculous thing. I, I admire how what you How is it ridiculous do. to say he doesn't have a job? Well, because I mean, No one hired him. That's just a fact. There, there's opportunities that are out there. Sean Payton did a good job after his first year leaving the league. Okay. okay, so there's always a time period, you know. Like, look, it's got to be the right situation for him, too. Was Tennessee going to be the right situation with Rarkat, Rand Carthon as the president of the team? I mean, like, you just jump to conclusions. Like, I, I, I just think to me, I and I know you got to do it, Michael. I know you have to do it, and scoreboard. I appreciate you having me. Scoreboard, my scoreboard. ass. Scoreboard. Scoreboard. You, you, you know, scoreboard, when he was winning, you wouldn't give him credit. It was somebody else. It's like well, that's at true. some point, <laughs> you have to be, your knowledge of the sport is so much about the scoreboard. You should read Walsh's book, The Score Will Take Care of Itself. Like, to me, I enjoy the debate. Like, because to me, what makes championship teams, what wins titles, what won those six Super Bowls was the fact of the things that he brought together. And, you know, if you don't want to acknowledge it, look, the San Antonio Spurs haven't done anything. They acknowledge Popovich for what he did. Now, if you were down in San Antonio doing talk radio down there, I'm sure you would be killing Popovich. I'm sure you would say, look at the scoreboard, look at the scoreboard. You know, and they think Popovich is a great coach. So, to me, you know, you've got to do your gig, but you're doing it with one-third of the knowledge that it takes to put together a great team. You want to crack at this? Well, I was just going to ask you what happened at the end. Why did it collapse? Well, I think there's a lot of reasons why it collapsed. I think there's a time period in every organization that has had success that they want to change, too. And I think that's only fair, right? I think that, you know, they want to change. You've read the book. But, but I'm really talking about before the change, the 4-13. and 13. Like, how did that implode the way it did? I think a lot of it was, was some, some poor decision. I think the quarterbacking, they should have brought competition in. I think the staffing was an issue. You know, the offensive line coach uh, got got sick during the season, the, off, the young offensive lineman. I think they lost a lot of close games. I think there's a lot of reasons. And, look, he's got to stand up and take accountability for it, which he will. But we're talking about one year. We're talking about really, like, if you get a chance to rebuild it. And I think the organization, I think the Kraft family had run their team a certain way, and they've given Bill all the authority to do that. They wanted to kind of come back and say, okay, we need to revisit this thing. And they have every right to do that. That's why they're called owners. Do you, do you think the, um, the Mac Jones thing, do you think that there was, it was all synced up there from the beginning? Like, did, do, was he do, forced on him? Yeah. Do you, get, do you get the sense that Bill wanted Mac Jones at the beginning? What, what, what do we call the beginning? The drafting of Mac Jones? Uh, no, I, I think he felt like there was a lot of people in the building that liked Mac. I'm not sure that, that, that he felt like, and I don't want to speak for him. He can certainly speak for himself. But I think there were other variables in play, too. And I think the reason you saw them not trade up to get the quarterback is because they felt like maybe if they didn't get Mac, they could get another player. So and I think that when you go back and really study the year that Mac had as a rookie when Josh was there as the quarterback coach, I think you could see there were things that Josh did really well with Mac that haven't been done since then. But Mac made when, you know, they come off that bye win and they win in Buffalo on the, and where he only throws three passes and they go in Indianapolis on that Sunday night game. You know, he has two turnovers in that game that have a chance to win the game and they can't quite get it done and Mac has been a player that has been I don't want to say mistake prone but has not made the plays that you need to make at the right time and I was high on Mac look I was a huge Mac fan I think I thought Mac was where I misevaluated Mac was his decision making in terms of being being able to make plays and the, and the ability to be accurate with the football when he needed to be. I think those are the two things. And you have to be critical of yourself as a scout or as a football person to say that. And it doesn't mean that Mac is a bad player. It just means that you have to understand the strengths and weaknesses of the guy. How about Bill's role? And again, we're joined by Michael Lombardi. The, the, r Bill's role in the relationship, okay? Year two, he brings in Patricia and Judge. Mac Jones respond, respond, responds poorly to it. Uh, even so, going so far as calling down to Alabama looking for advice. Bill then uses that against him. It sort of devolves from there. Then they get into this last year. 
and it felt like to most people, and it's been reported or speculated that Bill sort of intentionally hung him out to dry to prove a point to him or to the owner or to whoever, and uh, it was just that downward you spiral, that, Michael. Are you buying that? Some of it, yes, You sure. probably buy that Lee Oswald was on the sixth floor, too. But, look, let me say this to you. I think if you know Belichick a little bit, right, if you know Belichick just a little bit, you would know that winning is the most important thing. See, this shows you how naive you are, and this shows you how you really don't know the guy you've been covering for as long as you have. Because if you think there's one ounce of him, one ounce, that he doesn't want to win, he's put everything into his life to win. Of course he, want, he wants so to win So would you tell way, me Michael. that he was sabotaging the game? Then you don't really know the guy. I didn't really say sabotage. No, the you game. said no. You said he deliberately kept him in to prove a point. To, to prove a no. He, he thought he was no. losing anyway. Did you watch the Kansas City game? Did you watch some of these games? I, do, do you think I he played to win? Of, do you think he played to win against Kansas City when he kept punting on fourth and short in the, I, I in the think second half of that game? I think he was playing a game that he knew that if the more he let his quarterback play, how much more evidence did you need? I watched every single Patriot game. I watched every single Patriot tape. I watched everything. And if how many times like I would scream at the television put the other guy in but the other guy wasn't any good either the other guy wasn't any good either so it was like you're going from bad to badder and at some point you've got to sit there and say to yourself like okay like we should have signed a veteran quarterback we should have brought somebody else in and look if you think for one minute there was some conspiracy that he was trying to lose again you know, I mean, there was a single shooter, and that bullet did all that stuff in Dallas. You believe it? I, you go with it. Why didn't he mention Mac Jones' name from the end of uh, his second year into the middle of training camp? And again, I'm just roughing that there. But there was a <laughs> but, about, what do you mean? About, about six are, months. Are we going to Dairy Queen after the game where he here? Wouldn't or what? mention like his you have name. to mention his name? I mean, seriously, are do you we, think that was a functional good relationship? Let, let's and Bill play, and uh, we're going to get everybody play right field. Okay. Do you think like Bill had a good functional relationship with Mac Jones? I don't know. I've never seen. The two of them oh, interact. so now you don't know? Wait a minute! I, I thought you're, you're asking, inside the walls, and I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, you don't. Do you think That's Bill? True, do you think Bill had a good true. functional relationship with Mac Jones? I think he's had a good functional relationship with everybody. Oh, oh yeah. Look, I think to me, you, you don't <laughs> want to handle the truth. <laughs> That's Some why the players, guy ended up in Tampa. He's had a good functional oh, relationship with everyone. Oh, come do you do you believe do you really, that, Mike? Do you believe? Do you think he's had a good you, functional you really relationship know why with everybody? That in Tampa, I think there'll be one day that'll come out. I think to me, some players don't want the truth. Well, and that, some players don't want to hear the truth. And some players want to go to Dairy Queen he's, after the game and had, celebrate. He's and had a play- good functional relationship with everybody. Oh. Now that's fantasy land, Mike. Look at that, all the players that, that support is right there. That There's is PR, P- that no, is PR not, shilling. No, he's had not. a good functional relationship with everybody? Well, look. Look. Players Come that, on. Players that you tell the truth to, you're not going to have a good relationship with. And you're going to have to tell the truth to some players. Like, at some point, you're the leader of the team. You can't make everybody happy. Uh, you just can't. You're not going to make everybody happy. I mean, Mayo's going to have to make some tough decisions, too. You're going to have to make some ruffle some feathers. And you're going to have to observe it. And you're going to have to use your expertise to critique it. Because, to me, you're going to ruffle feathers. Look, when we were in Cleveland together, you know, we you didn't cut players. He had a good functional relationation with Bernie Kosar. Let no. me tell you, that was good. That was yeah, a good one. Because Bernie wouldn't accept the fact yeah, no, that he couldn't throw the ball to me as that guy over there. Bernie's fault. I mean, it's so Mac's <laughs> fault. I got it. I mean, you, you, well, if you want to know the truth, I'll tell you the truth. Let's if you want to have revisionist history, let's hear again, it. let's go to the sixth floor. I mean, if you really want to do that, like, at the end of the day, Bernie couldn't make a throw. Bernie would come over to the sideline and say, Bill, why are you pulling me? I'm, I'm, I'm 10 for 11. He threw for 32 yards. Like, at some point, it's not just the coach's fault. Okay, on Mac Jones, what did he do? What did Mac do? I don't know what you're talking about. Mac didn't play worth a darn. I mean, if, if Mac's going to be honest with himself, instead of sitting there saying, oh, don't coach me too hard, like, Mac isn't – I thought Mac was going to behave like an overachiever, right? Like, why, what made Brady so great? Brady was great because he had great talent, and he thought of himself as the 199th pick in the draft, and he was an overachiever. And he worked his ass off, and he took coaching, and he took hard coaching, and he welcomed it, and he loved it. Listen to him on McAfee talk about accountability and all those things, right? Mac doesn't want that, and it's a different generation of players. And so the only way Mac's going to get out of this funk is he's going to have to accept hard coaching, whether that comes from Alex Van Pelt, whether it comes from Ben McAdoo, I don't know. Okay. Michael Lombardi joins here. I'm enjoying the crap out of this. I, I've been waiting. <laughs> I've been waiting for Belichick's response 
Because I think he's been getting dumped on really good. By I mean, you? I, by sure, you? Cool, with, cool. With, without, with, of course. You, know, you break up your truck and you just dump on it and, I, you, and you give it no credibility well, whatsoever. Mike, I mean, I'm sorry. You sit Mike, on the back and you There's a scoreboard in the corner of the stadium, and for you to say it goes beyond the scoreboard, I think it's ludicrous. Well, it, that's it, how you value it. it. Score! The game! The win! Yes, yeah. I do. I look at the scoreboard. But, uh, but I'm sorry. All the stuff that's been good, you don't want. You didn't credit when it was good. But that's what you do. That, then I understand it. And I'm I telling you, role. I give him credit for the years with Brady. It was great. Yeah, you did. Let's go. We can go yes. back to some of that. Well, no, of course. I'm, I'm sure Patrick Patrick Pass has done a good job of researching some of this stuff. Now, you're being very quiet, which is nice of you. But I, I usually get double teamed here, you know, but <laughs> I can handle it. Look, here's the reality of this situation, of this conversation. I've been in a draft. I've been with Al Davis, and Al da you ain't no Al Davis, I can tell you that, all right? So I can handle that. Like, I got you, no problem. Al Davis, I had a harder time with. The reality of it is, is some people don't want to handle, they just want to handle what they know. It's a narrative. We have it all the time. Oh, he's 29 and 39 since Brady left. They haven't oh. won a playoff game. They stink, Michael. And he was in charge of all of it. Yeah, I'm not making that up. But he was narrative. in charge of all of it. But it was amazing when they won the six Super Bowls, somebody else brought the team together. It's amazing. Like, all of a sudden, he got stupid. Like, like all of a sudden, all those players that won Super Bowls, he, he never give him any credit for that. Let me ask you something uh, just outside this, because you mentioned it, and I, and I, do, and I don't want to let it go. That you said they've been one of the lowest spending teams in the league. And, okay, uh, the Crafts put all that on Belichick. They say he was in charge of all the money. He was in charge of the spending. And so the fact that they are a, the lowest spending team in the league is Bill's deal. I've always defended Bill on that because I find that impossible to believe that a coach tells an owner what to spend. But you tell me. You tell me. How did that break down? I, I, I think to me, you know, and I was in the building. I don't know the details of how it goes, but there's certainly always budgets and stuff that go into what plays. I'd never seen a coach. I think Bill was very, very good at being able to justify the value of the player versus the contract. And that's why they never really have been in bad cap situation, and he's always looked to the future. And I think that's what you have to do as a leader of an organization. You just can't say, I'm going to spend all the money for one player. Okay. Did he get everything he needed from the ownership level? Well, I don't know. I wasn't in any of those all those meetings. So I <laughs> Well, think, you are I selective think... when you want to play I was in the building and not in the building. No, but you're asking me about the ownership level. I didn't have a relationship with the ownership level. I never was in a meeting with Jonathan Kraft or Robert. But I do think that the ability when we were winning, I think the ability to win was there. Sure. I don't think there's any question about that. I don't I don't doubt that at all. I've never doubted that. I've never I have never been on record as saying that at all. I know. So don't put words in my I'm mouth. Not, I'm not. I can no, put my you're, own you're words doing a good job mouth. of dissing yourself from no, that No, I'm one. not dissing myself. No, you don't know me well enough to say I did. Because if you listen to anything I say, I take you're accountability. The one that, you're the one that brought it up before. I'm sorry. I, I, you t I take accountability. I told you about what I thought of Mac Jones, and I was wrong. So I have no problem in it, and I'm wrong. You, If you're in the profession that I'm in, not yours, if you're in the profession that I'm in, what are you, you have to admit you're, you're wrong. You're a media in guy. In your profession, you never admit you're wrong. You're not no. a media I do all the time. You're not a media guy. I, I am now. I write books now. But I admit I'm wrong. Yes, I, me too. I admit I'm wrong. Oh. Constantly. Okay. You don't know. You don't know. Where, where else has Bill been treated unfairly, here or elsewhere? That you hear, that you pick up. Well, I, I think he's been treated unfairly by the national media. I think there's a narrative out there that he's lost touch with the game. You know, I think that's a ridiculous narrative. I think if you've ever spent any time with him, you realize he hasn't. I mean, you could have a football. I, I was talking to somebody the other day that had a football conversation, and it's like it's ridiculous. Talk to any of the coaches in the league. Like, you know, you're sitting here and you're judging from afar. Talk to the, the people that competed against him in the league. Again, if he's so fabulous, why is he sitting there <laughs> on a boat somewhere right now without a, without a well, job? I think a lot of it is the opportunity, but you don't you don't know all the opportunities. Look, there was it. Look, if you go through all the jobs that were open, really, Washington decided that they wanted to build an organization around Adam Peters. That's their prerogative. I don't agree, but that's their prerogative. OK. And, it, and Tennessee wants to build it around Rand Carthon. Right. Teams so, are choosing other people than Bill. No, 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 that's not right. <laughs> wait, wait no, they're not? No, wait a minute, hold on. They're, cheesy, they're choosing a structure. Now, now, look, don't lead the witness here. They're choosing a structure of how they want to run their team. They value collaboration, which I'm sure you do too. They value collaboration. And if you hire a guy like Belichick or Mike Vrabel, do you feel the same way about Vrabel that you do about Belichick? Meaning what? 
that that he's sitting out there, he must be ridiculously bad. No, no, I think Vrabel's. Oh, well, I think Vrabel's got a lot more left in the tank than Bill. Oh, okay, right, okay. Well, see, now you're being, now you're, now you're uh, changing the narrative. No, I'm okay. just taking a shot. But that's that's okay. But the, there's certain people that want to run their organization, and they bring somebody in of the magnitude of Vrabel or Belichick that that wouldn't allow a collaboration to occur, and that's their right. That's their right. That's why Walsh said to me in 1984, you're only competing against eight teams because not all teams are interested in winning. So is Bill going to come back? Is he going to win? I think he will. What, and, what's the, and I'll come back on your show, and we'll talk about it. Let's do it. it. And, you, and you can have the forum that you have, and you can have that eraser with your pencil. I see you got a big one over there so that you can correct yourself when you're wrong. Geniuses with eraser are the best part of life. Michael, I, think it is. I, I, I honestly love, because I've been saying this, no, I. I had no idea I was getting into this. Either. I mean, this neither. is the best part about it. I came I have, over here. I don't know who booked me for this, but I thought I was going to talk about football done right. Capella. Instead, instead, I like. Instead, I'm getting my getting ridiculed here. I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm Norm, uh, Nathan R. Jessup on the stand here. You know, I'm going to order. A, who ordered the code red? No, I've been. You ordered the code red. I've on been Belichick. waiting There's to no hear from Bill. That. I've been waiting to hear from Bill. He's but, not going to talk to you. Why would he spend I'm, five I'm, minutes I know talking that. to you? I know Why would that. he spend five minutes talking to you? You have no well, idea. No. I know about anything, and he's going to lower no, himself to you. No. And, oh, I got to talk to Fegler he, because he was the Almighty Fel, God. F E L Felger. Uh, he's going. I got to talk to him because if I win him over, I could really no. do a good job, <laughs> and maybe I'll get into Canton if I win Michael over. I if I no. can win him over, it's my whole existence in life. He's going to have to win over this guy who talks on the radio in ninety eight point five. Like he could give one rat's butt about what you think. He doesn't care. He's gonna, he could care less about. It. He wants six Super Bowls. He's been in nine. You think he cares what you think? Do you think he has one idea or one remote idea about about what you think or what he does? No, of course not. He's moving on. Well, at one point he did. No, he didn't. He's never thought about it. Don't give yourself that much credit. He's never thought about you one minute. That's not he true. Has never, you're not the girlfriend that he reminisces about. <laughs> no. He has never thought about you one minute. How did I get in this thing? How do I get out of this thing? I'm a baseball guy. I, I, no, you're sitting over there talking about it. Like, how did I get in this? You don't think I've got – I covered the team as a beat guy for like 15 years or 10 years. You don't think I got calls from the team about things I wrote or said? I don't know. I, I, I get it to I, this day. Look, I, to me, I think to, when you enter this profession, as I have, you accept the fact that people on the outside are going to say what they say. And you have to focus and, and concentrate on what matters most. Which is? The thing, the job at hand. For me, to, before you, it's the scoreboard. No, yeah, the scoreboard. I mean, yeah. Yes. All right. You before know what today, do, you I know thought what it mattered to win and lose, but now there's I'm so many more things. I'm going to look at your ratings every day. Ooh, do I'm going to look at your <laughs> ratings every <laughs> you day. See, do you want to see the ones that came out yesterday? Uh, I, I, I want to see if you take a dip and Through do the all roof, that. Babe. Well, yeah, and, and I'm then, sure you're going to get good ratings on this one. You're going to put it on Twitter, and you're going to say, "Look, I took." But that's his job over there. No, but that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. And then when we scoreboard, we go through it, and you and I are going to go to Dallas, and we'll walk through. Dealy Plaza together, and you'll oh, tell me why he was up there. That was awesome. I enjoyed the hell out me of it. Me too. <laughs> I've been waiting to hear from Bill, and there it was. You didn't hear from Bill. I, I did. I, I did not. I let me did. say this very I heard clearly. from Bill. No, let me say I this very clearly. I just heard from Bill. Look, when you walk into the Patriots building, let me be very clear here. When you walk into that building, when Bill was running the building, when you walk in there, there was a four. There was one sign that said this, and I want this to be very clear. It said, "It said, put the team first. Be attentive." Speak for yourself. I'm not speaking for him. I'm speaking for Michael Lombardi. So let's make sure you're fully aware of that. You did not talk to Belichick, and you will never talk to Belichick. <laughs> you just talked to Michael Lombardi. So let's be clear well, on that. That's what I think. I'm not telling what Bill thinks because Bill's his own man. What I, do you think, Tony? Uh, I'm, I'm uh, staying out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Where's he end up next year? Is it Dallas? Is, is, are they... Are they going to move on from Mike McCarthy ends up there? You know, I, I, I don't know how it's all going to play out, but it will play out. I mean, at some point, you know. Have you well, talked to him? Does he definitely want to come back? Have I talked to him? Uh, yeah, I have talked to him okay, several he, times. Is he definitely going to come back? I think, I think there's certainly going to be opportunities, sure. Why would he want to come back? He's good at what he does. Unlike what you think, he's really good at what he does. And people that know know he's really good okay so like nobody that thinks he's not he's got to go to a commercial break and i got to get the hell out of here because i'm just arguing <laughs> do you want to promote in anything do you, do you want to promote anything i want to promote the fact that i'm speaking for myself that's all i want to promote okay i could care less if anybody buys a book football done right or listen to my podcast all right 
I'm promoting that. You're going to promote this. I appreciate it. Mike, thanks for coming by. It was fun. Oh, really? it, was a, I, I it was a blast it. on my part. Thank you. Okay. Tony, you did a great job. Thank you. I appreciate that. We'll be right back.